All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Hey, everybody, and welcome to Show and Tell. We've got a bunch of people from the Adafruit community and DigiKey coming by. They're going to show us what they're working on, hacking on, soldering and sewing and 3D printing and all that goodies. And we've also got people from the community who are going to come by. And you're welcome. You. Yes, you. You've got a webcam and a mic. Well, come on by and show off what you're working on. It doesn't have to be done. It doesn't have to use Adafruit stuff. All kind of making our welcome. Even even art and design right. and and for the folks who um, watch our shows, we're always trying to uh, push the envelope, state of the art. Uh, we're working out a, a way to do uh, camera stuff so we can do more Ooh. show and tell stuff ourselves. Um, so this is uh, the result of the setup being set up for our hack chat today. So these are some key caps. So uh, we're, what we're hoping to do is have some more Hatchet. show and tell Hatchet. stuff from Lady Ada, from myself, retro hardware and more. So this is just a little bit of a preview. But... Without further ado. Okay. Kick it off. Kevin from DigiKey. Kevin, what you got going on this week? Hello. Hey. How's everybody doing? Hey, good. Hey. Good. So speaking of keycaps, there's a, a really good segue into my, That's my right. project. So I'm working with a macro pad and I'm creating my own keys. I I have four different macro setups in here. And this one specifically, I'm a junkie for shortcut keys, keyboard shortcuts. So this thing is just you guys were speaking my language when you created this. Yes. I have one uh, on a Mac. One thing I hate is having a ton of windows open. And how do you close them all without, mm. not close, minimize. Minimize. So I found out it's like a four key sequence. I have it set up on minus W. So minimize windows. And then I have a screenshot. I have the sleep button. I'm not going to push that or you guys will lose me. Bye. And I'm, I'm still working on creating the rest of them. I have the shortcuts created, but I'm working on 3D printing the keys. But it's pretty cool. I have, uh, you know, you push the button, it changes color. You probably can't see it. It's a little washed out. But I love this macro pad. This thing is just amazing. Yeah, yeah. We, like, looked at every macro pad and project, and we tried to take a little bit of the best of all of them, but also give it a little bit of an Adafruit spin to it. I think we did. I think we did really good. I think this is a – does yeah, a little bit of everything. This one is just a simple 10 key is okay. what I created for this one. But, yeah, I, I absolutely love this thing. And – I have a, another one of my, my teammates working on creating his own version of what would he use it for without telling him what I'm using it for. So I'm curious to see what he, yeah. what he does with it. Yeah. But we have a few projects well, ahead that we're going to show soon. The Olympics are coming up. So a lot of folks are like, how do I keep track of everything? And they're making yep. their own uh, macro pads that have all this. Like when you when you hit the thing in the sport you're looking at, it'll, it'll bring it up. Yeah, it, it, there's so many things. They, opportunities with this thing are endless so you guys did a great job on it and i'm looking forward to playing with it more i also love how right. easy it is to to modify having having seen the effort it takes to use you know kmk or qmk i think this is it's so easy that you know you can put yeah. together your own you know overlay macro setup you know in minutes yeah. you know an hour yeah. no compiling yeah. needed also, if you work at DigiKey, you have to like key stuff, like keys and the name, Digi the DigiKey. Digital key. It's, uh, it's exactly. a requirement. Yeah, it's a requirement. It's not called, exactly. it's not DigiMouse. It's Digi so Digi is that why you created this? Because of DigiKey? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, guys. You're, you're a trademark lawyer. I'll talk to our trademark lawyer. Okay. okay. All right, bye, Thank Kevin. You, All right, Kevin. take care. All right, next up, Nine Pedro, what chick stirred in this week? Hey guys, hey folks. so we got a macro pad project as well. We're going to lean over to the accessibility part of this though. So braille keycaps that you could 3D print. It's got like the most, I think the most common uh, type of keys you might want to uh, have on here. So it's volume up, volume down, page up, page down, copy, tab to move through the different things. But not only that, you also get audio feedback. So hopefully it doesn't get any, move any of the windows here, but you can kind of hear the little speaker on there. Yeah, oh, yeah. so you can tell the difference. Yeah, so well, if you're like learning Braille, you get that extra uh, layer of feedback in addition to. I don't to think just it's like maybe it tells you it actually did it, or because you you know if you have overlays, yeah. the overlay might change. But I thought like even though it's just a tone, I always like having speakers on our designs, so it's not just visual. You can always have audio feedback. I I respond better to audio than visual feedback. To yeah, know yeah. I think it's harder to use a, like a, a virtual keyboard unless you can hear a clack clack clack. Yeah, yeah. So I feel you like know. it's just, like good. At, Making accessible things just makes better products and better designs, anyways. So yeah. I feel like this is a good, this is a good exercise. Yeah, and hopefully totally. we're gonna get uh, you know wave playback working fixed up soon, and then yeah. we can of course play little audio clips too. That'll be fun. Yeah. 
Definitely, that'll be a nice little soundboard. Super cool. So we just use like you know the standard Braille alphabet on there and some of the special keys to uh, create all these. And then on 3D Hangouts uh, earlier today, we showed how to go inside of the Fusion file and actually make all of your own custom keys. So definitely check that out. And of course, the guide and all the files are out and available for this. And uh, Katni did the code for this, posted that up earlier today. So come check it out. Make your own keycaps. A great power up team up. Nice work. All right. Pedro. Thanks so and much. We'll be showing time. we'll be showing your videos tonight. And you have a fun awesome. se speed up. We have a uh, Loki. Oh yeah. Is it yeah. Loki Gator? Yeah. That's that right. My, that's like my request. Thank you. you oh, you didn't uh, do a color. It was so cute. Oh yeah. Wait. Oh yeah. yeah. Hold up. Hold <laughs> up. Hold up. That's cute. Yeah. Everybody likes Loki. Okay. <laughs> I just want to cut Okay. See you later. Next up, Scott. What you got going on, Scott? Hello. Uh, I just wanted to do like a quick uh, plug for the the release that Dan just did, Circuit Python Alpha Five. And uh, for those of you, I brought. Uh, I just got one of these. I think I got it from DigiKey. This is the Arduino Nano RP twenty forty Nano Connect or whatever order they're in. Yeah. Uh, sh shout out to Blitz City DIY who made the Circuit Python board definition. Uh, unfortunately, the flash chip they have on there doesn't actually tell us what size it is. And so it was falling back the, to the default size. So if you have one of these and it has a one megabyte uh, file system on it in Alpha 5, I just fixed it, got it in today. Um, but if you have one of these, back up all your files and then do the import storage storage.erase file system. And you should get the 15 megabyte file system after that. Um, so that's one of the many fixes that went into Alpha 5. We're like trying to buckle down and get uh, all the way out to 7.0 stable. So keep an eye on that. All right. Yay. So I'm much, so Scott. excited. And uh, deep dive this week, right? Deep dive this week. Uh, and thanks to Jim for uh, joining last week's deep dive. Uh, one of the MicroPython developers went deeper than we've ever gone on a deep dive, uh, oh, wow. right down to x86 assembly. So Whoa. Uh, it's very cool. Jim is awesome, and Damien so, is awesome as well. So uh, thanks again to Jim for being on that. And check that out. It's not just the same old, same old last week, yeah. at least. I love I love the 7.0 release. There's so much good stuff is in it. I love that we're catching up and starting to contribute a lot more code back to MicroPython. It's easier to do yeah. cross yep. contributions. The great merge has happened. So cool. So yeah, cool. it's fun. And that just reminded me, I have to email all the MicroPython folks. We'll probably do another team meeting uh, with them as well, which has been really fun. It's so weird to like, it felt like a, a, a team at work where it's like, oh, these people work in the same code as we do and think about the same thing. So it's great yeah. to be working closer with them. Neat. This is like, this is like the open source software and hardware dream. Isn't it? I think so. Yeah. I, I think, <laughs> it. At least well, I'm living the dream. Well, I think with open source projects, people, um, they're aware of like forks and they're aware of like, you know, name changes. Like there's a lot of mm -hmm. things that happen in news. But you don't hear about the success stories right. of, of doing open source uh, with a bunch of people, maybe not all at the same time, but I think this is a good example. Like there's uh, different goals for the mm -hmm. different projects, but there's a shared code base and like a shared desire and values and goals. Right. And it's all starting to come together. It took a while, but yeah, here we are. And if folks are interested in that, I'll plug the Talk Python to Me episode that I just did with Damien as well. So that's really interesting. For those who are interested in this dynamic between CircuitPython and MicroPython, check that out yeah. as well. We're going to have uh, that in our Python on hardware segment on Ask an Engineer, which was in the newsletter, which you should sign up for on Adafruit yeah. Network, by the way. Everybody. All right. Thank you, All right, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Next thank up, you. Jeff Epler. Jeff Epler. What you got going on, Jeff? Hi. Uh, so... Like a lot of people, I was intimidated by this 30 key monstrosity, <laughs> so I don't even know what I'm going to do with it yet. Uh, but what I did do was create this 3D printable kind of backbone that supports a feather and the macro pad itself so that you don't accidentally snap it apart and you can set the whole thing on your desk. Is this a quantum computer? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. It's a, it's a quantum computer. It's yeah. you know running rainbows as you do. That was easy enough. Um, but yeah, so I dropped the 3D printable files in the Discord if you're interested in making one. You just need to add some of the M2.5 heat set inserts and use some uh, screws to fasten everything on. And then it's nice and stable. And yeah, as soon as I figure out what to do with it, I'll actually do something. So ideas welcome. Um, someone had mentioned that the macro pad looks like the co computer from Quantum Leap. Quantum Leap. Leap. Sure. And then, and then and Phil one, made me that, watch Quantum Leap, which was actually pretty good. I didn't, I didn't mind you it. missed it, huh? 
Yeah, yeah it was, it was it has a long age. We're not going to watch all of them. There's a lot of them. I'll tell you though, I yeah. really loved Air Look. Airwolf as a kid. That was like the that was like the weird kind of tacky '80s show. That the, I was like, um, yeah, all right. I'm getting insights here. But, but, your, but your project looks like if you know people, if Ziggy kept going, like this is Ziggy yeah. Max, Ziggy Pro, <laughs> Ziggy Extreme. Well, I feel like this is making me think of something from Star Wars, but I'm not sure exactly yeah. why. Just like the, like the white and red. Plate. It's the red. It's, it's the like Vader plate. It looks like a semi computer. Yeah. yeah, it could also be the Buck Rogers. Um, Style stuff to, anyways. We talk about it all night. All, all right. right. I think well, somebody should so definitely make a, like a Darth Vader costume, but like his chest plates a synth, and you can go and like, <laughs> boop, 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 boop. play Darth Vader. Yes. Boop, 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 boop. I'm worried that this has already been done. Mm, probably. It's like when you Google for something, it's like it's already been there. Yeah. There's whatever whatever's after Rule Thirty Four, which is a, here's a cosplay that has been done at yeah. Dragon Con. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, Jeff. All right. Thanks, Jeff. See you later. All, all right. right. Next up, Tim. Fun guy. What you got going on? Hey. Hello. All right, so uh, my project actually is inspired by Jeff's project from last week. Jeff showed off uh, the calculator that he's been working on, and this is uh, kind of an opposite opposite take on that. So it will give you math problems, and your uh, it's your job to solve them. So it's, uh, it will print out the problem there, and if you get it correct, then it will give you a nice green uh, sweeping Ooh. animation, uh, and if you get it incorrect, then it will give you a red sweeping animation. And then I also built in some settings so you can turn on and off uh, the different types of problems and you can change the numbers so you can uh, kind of make it easier or harder based on what your level of, uh, of math is. Uh, and then I'm working on 3D printing the caps. These are the same caps that were in uh, Jeff's calculator, but I am experimenting with dropping like nail polish uh, and maybe paint Ooh. or something like that in there to make the, the contrasting colors instead of uh, different colored prints. I like that look. It reminds me a little bit of like, we know what, when I saw people etch acrylic with a laser cutter and then you Sharpie over it and then you wipe away the Sharpie and it leaves like a very nice yeah. um, etched, you know, it looks really good because it's the, the paint is kind of embedded inside. But that's, I really like that eight. Yeah. That's a fancy eight. So that's Thank cool. You. All right. Nice work. This is really yeah. good. The, Thank you. Yeah. The thing that's. Can, a, you, can you sand 3D prints? Like, could you yeah. paint it and then yeah, sand yeah. away? All, yeah. all right. That's going to be whatever. Yeah, this is neat because it, the the one of the goals is to have um, a whole series of things that people can build, and now we're up to like calculator. Yeah. Make your own keyboard, make yeah. your own phone, make your own camera. Yeah. Stuff like that. All right, Tim. Well, thank you so much. Nice work. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Next up, Andy. Andy. How is it going, Andy? Hey, what Andy. you got going on this week? Hey, I've got a device I made called Unitron, and it's for Ooh. doing live conversions between units. It's a keypad with a Ooh. display. It's a keypad, nice. Ooh. And so if you turn it on, uh, so right now it's on inches and millimeters. And so the top, the blinking uh, is the input. And so you can switch the input by toggling the switch. Oh, yeah. So I can do like 20. This is what to do. Ah, this is cool. So this is a good idea. 1.6 inches is 548 millimeters, but what if I wanted to do millimeters inches? I just switch it real quickly. Ah. And then I can do feet and meters, miles, kilometers, pounds, kilograms, Fahrenheit, and Celsius. And then, That's cool. yeah, and then it's so I've got it's powered by uh, AAA batteries. Got Magnets on the back, so you can oh, yeah. sit on the fridge when you're, you know, always trying to grow up between inches and millimeters in the kitchen. Yeah. And uh, common. Yeah, I cool. like your little subplate for the for the for the display. Yeah, thank you. That's cool. All right. Yeah, the I, I kind of love it. It's, it's so fun. it's it's kind of got a little bit of that um, steampunk thing. It's just like, and here is my. Contraption. It will convert any unit this is, to this any is a, unit. This is, a very, this is a very American problem with a very American solution. This is a very, like, yeah, <laughs> kind of a problem. Um, Good work. Nice work, thank Professor you, Andy. All right. Thank you so much, Andy. All right. Next up, we're going to go to Seth, and then we're going to go to Joey. Hey, Seth, Seth. What's going on? Hey. I have my son here, too. Um, so, Hello, fellow engineer. <laughs> I have been experimenting with boards like crazy, and I made this little matrix board. And I thought, oh, a microcontroller would make it cool too. And so why not add Wi-Fi? So I added a ESP32 S2 on it, mm. uh, stem a port. Mm. Um, and so right now I've got a, um, 
had the MPU 6050 on it. And I thought mm -hmm. it would be cool to make like a little like motion detector. So, um, so it starts up and then it gets going. So it'll, depending on the value, wow. the, it gets from the first um, bit from the MPU, it'll change colors. That's nice. So like it'll cycle between like purple, orange, and green. So that's pretty cool. Very uh, cool. Yeah. And so I thought it was a, a pretty cool take on the, uh, on the matrices. I know that you guys have the uh, the matrix portal on. I thought, oh, what if it was a little bit smaller? So Yeah, uh, I like the miniature versions of some of the kind of intimidating, like here's a giant panel that's going to bring your retinas out, but there's a little one that doesn't do the same thing. Yeah, o only a little bit. <laughs> yeah, just, so, yeah don't, that don't one's running on like 0.1 brightness, so I can imagine running it on half brightness. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was a fun little thing I was working on. All right. Well, thank you so much, Seth. Yep. Next up, Joey. Hey, hey Joey. Joey I haven't seen you in a bit. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. Good to see y'all, too. Um, yeah. So I've been working on a um, well, the watch that y'all uh, I've brought by a couple of times. And hmm. I've reached the point where, let me see if I can share my screen here. Is yeah. that shared? Yeah. yeah, it's on its way. Cool. So. Um, yeah, so I've gotten the watch to the point now where I can actually start to like write some decent firmware for it, and I'm actually using uh, this Pi Quarter gadget that I came up with a while back, or came yeah. brought to the show a while back, to uh, display a UART coming from the watch. So now, as I'm writing my I squared C driver, I can hit reset here and see the result of reading a the value off of this uh, sensor that I have chained uh, chained through the Pi Quarter, <laughs> the watch. Um, so it's still like very early days, but I can, I'm very excited to finally be getting I squared C stuff working because it gets really cool once we have these little sensory gadgets. This is a BME 280 on a flex board that I'm going to want to put in here and have on the wrist just uh, measuring temperature and pressure mm. and uh, humidity. Oh, it's like so, flat, flat semi-QT. It's very cute. It's very, it's very small. It's all, very, all pretty tiny. Uh, but yeah, no, I just wanted to buy and share. I thought it was really cool being able to kind of use the Stemo QT format plus this other thing to, you know, yeah, just uh, kind of build the tools to work on, on the thing, you know? So tiny. That's All awesome. right. Thank you, Joey. Always you making so cool hardware. And Thanks, at some point, um, I have this. Uh, so I, my to do's are like sometimes in my inbox and then sometimes are in my drafts and then sometimes are in, you know, where I keep track of all the stuff. The make the ebook, <laughs> make, make your book is still yeah. in there. So we're still going to make it. I just don't know when. Totally. It's, it's, it's yeah. been a strange year for a lot of us. So. Yeah. So you're, you're, back on, you're back on the East Coast now, right? I am. Yeah. Okay, great. So we're here. We'll figure it out. Yeah, now's a good time to redesign because, of course, now there's a silicon shortage. So just you might want to design it for a chip that's available. RP I actually made a, I raspberry. Um, yeah, I made a Pi Pico version, uh, which is not feather compatible, but uh, but I'm also like brainstorming an ESP32 S2 version that would yeah. be yeah, feather the, compatible. Yeah, ESP32 so. S2. It seems to me we can kind of get them in the RP24. You can kind of get them. I'll say the Sandy 51s. I'm not getting any for like a year and a half. Yeah, yeah, that so seems like if a... you want to finish this <laughs> within another year or two, um, you know. But it's easy to redesign it because it went Circuit Python or Arduino. Totally. You're yeah. going to swap out a different chip. So that's yeah. some 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 hints for you. I mean, I can't predict the market, but right now those are the two things I seem to yeah. be able to get. Right on. Good, so good if you want to spin that up, we'll be able yeah, to definitely do not use it. an STM chip at all. If anything with STM in it, you can't get them. We do not yeah. get access to them. Well. Thanks for the pointers, y'all. Right. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks for having me. And we'll right, see you soon. Joey. All right. Yep. All right, everybody. Super that sweet. is our show and tell for the week this week. Thank you so much for being part of it. This is the best half an hour of our lives pretty much every single week. Yeah, uh, it's come, fun seeing people, friends, come yeah. by. Um, come on by uh, every single week, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. Ask an Engineer starts in about 10 minutes or so. See you all next week. Bye, everybody. Bye -bye. See you in 10 minutes. Bye.